With the Marvel Cinematic Universe's Phase 3 wrapping up with Spider-Man Far From Home, it's time to turn our attention to Phase 4. Now that Thanos, the big bad of the MCU's first 11 years, is gone, what new villains could join the MCU in Phase 4? In this video, we're ranking the possibilities from villains we hope to see to ones previous films have already hinted at. While bad guys haven't always been the MCU's strong suit, there are some intriguing options who could appear in upcoming movies. Coming in at number one is Onslaught. While he may be a long shot, we think this evil entity could provide a unique way to introduce the X-Men to the MCU. Now that Disney and Fox have merged, the MCU once again has access to characters from the X-Men and Fantastic Four, so it seems like only a matter of time before they join the franchises. The question is, how will the MCU go about welcoming these teams into the fold? The current X-Men series has been going since 2000 and is finally wrapping up with Dark Phoenix. In that time, we've gotten multiple mutant origin stories, so that doesn't seem like a territory the MCU needs to retread. The villain Onslaught represents an intriguing alternative. Onslaught was created when Professor X telepathically merged with a catatonic Magneto. All of Magneto's negative emotions combined with the long-suppressed hurt and rage of Professor X to create the psionic being Onslaught. Onslaught has the powers of both Professor X and Magneto, and a few additional ones too, like enhanced size and strength. There have been rumors that the reason the X-Men haven't appeared in the MCU yet is because they've been operating in an alternate dimension. If Professor X creates Onslaught in that world and then he makes it to our world, it would only be right that the X-Men would follow. In the comics, the X-Men, the Fantastic Four, and the Avengers have all attempted to put a stop to Onslaught. So he could be a threat that brings all three teams together again in the MCU. Another long shot is Annihilus, a bad guy powerful enough that he could give Thanos a run for his money. One reason we're holding out hope that we'll be seeing him soon is that Guardians of the Galaxy mastermind James Gunn has said he's a fan. While Annihilus wasn't available for the first two Guardians movies, the Disney-Fox merger makes his inclusion in Guardians 3 a possibility. Annihilus rules the Negative Zone in the comics. While the Negative Zone hasn't come up in the MCU so far, fans have speculated that it could be replaced by the MCU's Quantum Realm. The Quantum Realm was essential to the events of Avengers Endgame and was the key to the creation of the MCU's multiverse. Still, we know very little about this realm. Introducing its villainous ruler could make for a fascinating story arc. Plus, Annihilus is super powerful, so he would provide a reason for another Avengers-style superhero team-up later in Phase 4. Earlier this year, Captain Marvel introduced the Skrulls to the MCU. In that movie, the aliens that Carol Danvers thought were merciless fiends turned out to be refugees seeking a home of their own. In the comics, though, not all scrolls are so peaceful. These shapeshifters have been at war for centuries, and in the Secret Invasion comics, some took on the guises of our favorite superheroes. As we know from Captain Marvel, the scrolls don't just take the form of those they shapeshift into, they assume their traits as well. One potential Phase 4 storyline could see evil Skrulls taking on the identities of superheroes the world has come to trust. It would be quite a gut punch for the MCU's characters and fans alike. Movie fans know Norman Osborn best as his alter ego, the Green Goblin. In fact, Osborn and the Green Goblin have appeared in both the Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield-led Spider-Man films. Yet, even though Spider-Man, now played by Tom Holland, has joined the MCU, so far Norman Osborn hasn't. That could change in Phase 4. And while it's possible the MCU could delve into the Green Goblin storyline again, we're thinking something else is in order. Fortunately, in the comics, Osborn's story hasn't always revolved around his role as the green villain. In one especially intriguing plot, he essentially takes on Nick Fury's position as the commander of the Avengers. In that role, he assembles his own Avengers team. Known as the Dark Avengers, the team consists of supervillains who disguise themselves as existing superheroes. The team does Norman's dirty work, which could eventually lead to the ultimate showdown with the real Avengers. Black Widow suffered a sad fate in Endgame. However, that's not the last we'll see of her. Natasha Romanoff is finally headlining her own solo movie. Details are scarce so far, but it's expected that the movie will be a prequel that takes place before the first Avengers movie. That could point in an interesting direction that leads to the big screen introduction of the villain Sophia. Sophia was kidnapped as a child. Her future looked dim until Black Widow showed up and saved her and other victims from those that would do them harm. 
After those events, Sophia came to admire Romanoff so much that she decided she wanted to defeat her and take the title of Black Widow for herself. Not exactly the kind of fan you want. Sophia was introduced in the comic The Avengers Prelude, Black Widow Strikes. The three-part series was supposed to be set in the world of the MCU between the events of Iron Man 2 and The Avengers, so technically the character is already part of the MCU, yet many more fans would discover her if she made an appearance in the Black Widow movie. Or she could always appear as a new evil Black Widow in subsequent MCU films. Her use of the name of their fallen friend would certainly make going up against her personal for the remaining Avengers. One of the most tantalizing villains that could join the MCU following the merger of Disney and Fox is Doctor Doom. Victor Von Doom is a fan favorite character, yet he was never done justice on the big screen. In both the 2005 and 2015 versions of Fantastic Four, the character never showed the menace he's capable of. Doctor Doom is a technological genius who could challenge Black Panther's Shuri. Plus, he's also a talented sorcerer who could take on Doctor Strange. And while he's most often associated with the Fantastic Four, the character has taken on all sorts of Marvel heroes. All that could combine to make him a thrilling adversary for the superheroes of the MCU. Doctor Doom even became an anti-hero by taking up the title of Iron Man for a while. That opens up the possibility of the character initially being introduced as an ally, an especially interesting idea. No matter how the MCU chooses to incorporate him, fans will be watching closely with hopes that this supervillain will finally be done right. These next characters are slightly more likely to join the MCU in Phase 4 for the simple fact that they're already a part of it. The Celestials are a group of long-lived cosmic beings. In the comics, they're known for creating the Eternals, who are soon getting their very own Marvel movie. They're also responsible for the Skrulls' shape-shifting abilities and Earth's superheroes. And we've already met at least one of them. The second Guardians of the Galaxy movie introduced us to Peter Quill's father, Ego, the living planet who counts himself as one. While the character didn't come across as threatening at first, Guardians 2 made it clear that looks can be deceiving. Ego was ultimately a megalomaniacal villain who was willing to destroy his own children to get what he wanted. While the Guardians eventually defeated him, it certainly wasn't easy. If the Celestials team up against the MCU superheroes in Phase 4, they could be a bigger adversary than Thanos ever was. Another villain the MCU has access to as a result of the Disney-Fox merger is the iconic Devourer of Worlds, Galactus. Not only could the character offer a lot to the franchise, he's also a rumored favorite of Marvel Studios' head, Kevin Feige. That means we could be seeing him sooner rather than later. Galactus was also briefly seen as a huge cloud in 2007's Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer. While the character is huge in the comics, he's more often depicted as a giant humanoid with an impressive purple helmet. That is hopefully how he'd appear if he shows up in the MCU. Thanos did the unthinkable in Avengers Infinity War when he snapped half of all life out of existence. Galactus does him one better by consuming whole planets. Unlike many villains who dream of world domination though, Galactus' goals aren't evil. Planets are simply his meal of choice. He's a big guy and only planets will sustain him. That means he's not really evil, he's just trying to survive. The moral quandary that taking on Galactus could create would make for a fascinating story. And the character is so large it could be interesting to see exactly how the MCU heroes take him on. The introduction of Galactus would also come with an added bonus. Galactus sends out heralds to find new planets to consume. His most famous herald is the beloved character, the Silver Surfer. So if the MCU chooses to incorporate Galactus, it's likely the Silver Surfer would appear first. In fact, like Thanos, Galactus could be the big villain lurking in the shadows for several films before finally appearing in all of his glory. Another villain that fans are hoping comes to the MCU is Kang the Conqueror, one of the Avengers' biggest comic book villains. Like many characters in the MCU, Kang is a technological genius, but he also offers something more. The good guys use time travel to set things right in Endgame. That makes the possibility that Kang could debut in the MCU better than ever. That's because Kang is a master of time travel and different realities. He's intent on conquering everywhere he goes. 
That means he's done everything from being followed as a god in ancient Egypt to dominating in the distant future. If that weren't enough, multiple versions of him exist. So even when one is defeated, another one pops up. And not all versions are alike, leading to a character with multiple goals and personalities. Kind of confusing, but also an interesting opportunity to see how different versions of the same character could develop. In addition, although Kang is human, his access to future technology makes him incredibly challenging to take on. By introducing time travel in alternate timelines in Endgame, the MCU may have opened the door to Kang or even helped create him. What makes the villain an even more perfect option for Phase 4 is the way he's come into contact with so many of Marvel's franchises. That provides an opportunity to use the character to bring both the Fantastic Four and the X-Men into the MCU. Our final two potential villains are almost certain to appear in Phase 4. How do we know? Eh, they've already been teased. First, there's Carl Mordo. In Doctor Strange, Mordo befriended and trained Stephen Strange as a sorcerer. By the end of the film, though, it seemed like he came to regret that decision. Doctor Strange used the Time Stone to repeatedly alter time to defeat Dormammu. Leaving Mordo horrified by the way he flaunted the laws of nature, Mordo decided that there were too many sorcerers and aimed to correct the problem. In a post credit scene, Mordo was seen lashing out against a fellow sorcerer, zapping his magic and taking it for his own. It's a first step in his larger quest to rid the world of sorcerers. Clearly, the scene is setting up Mordo's appearance as the potential big bad of Doctor Strange 2. One way or another, it seems certain he'll be taking on his former friend in that film, but he could become an even bigger threat. When he drains another person of magic, it doesn't just disappear, it has to go somewhere. And if that means Mordo amasses more and more of it, that could turn him into an incredibly powerful being. Whether that means he'll become powerful enough to take on all of the superheroes of the MCU remains to be seen. Finally, the villain we're most likely to see in Phase 4 is Adam Warlock. While we haven't actually seen him in the MCU yet, thanks to Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2, we know he exists. That movie saw the Guardians come up against the Sovereign, a proud, brilliant, and beautiful alien race. Still, Aisha, the Sovereign's High Priestess, was left fuming and frustrated after the Guardians stole from her. And then, to add insult to injury, the gang thwarted her people's attempts to bring them down. In a post credit scene, she shows off a cocoon in which she's created a being who could finally take those pesky Guardians out once and for all. She claimed that he was even more powerful and attractive than the Sovereign. She also named him Adam. This is almost certainly a nod to Adam Warlock. In the comics, Adam Warlock is typically a good guy and he might be introduced as one in the MCU. However, Warlock also has an evil side called Magus. Magus comes to be when Warlock makes contact with the Infinity Stones. It's possible that the Infinity Stones could factor into Phase 4 and beyond of the MCU. After all, with time travel now a possibility, the Infinity Stones are still out there somewhere. The MCU could also go a different route and have the being Aisha created enter the world as Magus. After all, she wants him to take out the Guardians, so she isn't grooming him to be a good guy. Either way, it seems inevitable that we'll be seeing Adam Warlock and or Magus in the MCU shortly. Which of these villains are you hoping show up in future MCU films? 